What is up guys, my name is Lex. Welcome to my golf channel. How's it going? We're on hole 17. Let's see how we can do it. All right. Not the best lie. Yikes. That's gonna be tough. Okay. And just, just, just the wrist it. Yep. Wrist it. That's it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting for you. All right. They call the cops on us. Here we go. Oh my gosh! Clean that divot up. Clean that divot up. Oh my gosh, bunker. Oh my. Gosh. All right, calling it quits on the day. At least it's beautiful. All right, let's update you guys on this bankroll rebuild. I've had three great days playing at the Hard Rock the last couple of days. I had a $500 win, I had a $1,600 win, and then a $3,700 win last night. That is around a $6,000 uptick. That puts us at around $30,000 left to get back to zero on this bankroll rebuild. Today, we're going to be going into the Hard Rock, playing some 510 No Limit. Let's go after golf i headed into the hard rock to play 510 no limit i played for around four hours and only played one significant pot i flopped a nut flush with ace queen of diamonds and a three bet pot and stacked my opponent for over a 6k pot one poker hand is not going to do for a poker vlog so we're back today it's a sunday at harris pompano beach 510 private game three thousand dollar buy-in and my first hand i look down at pocket aces early position raises to 75 i three bet to 200 in the cutoff and check back the 256 two heart board turn cards an eight my opponent checks to me again this time i bet out 300 dollars before my opponent check raises me to 1000 dollars looks like he's got around 400 dollars left in his stack i guess if he's got two pair a set or a straight we're just going to double them up never going to be folding my hand in a three bet pot so I go all in, my opponent looks frustrated and folds. So he must have been completely airball bluffing. First hand going our way. <laughs> Next up, call for 25. I've got jacks in middle position. I raised to $100. There's a call for $100. A late position action aggressive player re-raises me to 525 bucks. Looks like he started the hand with around $3,000. I think two options work here. One is a four bet jam all in for around $3,000 and two is just calling. I feel like out of position with jacks, we most likely want to just four bet jam here, but against an aggressive player who is capable of bluffing, I think calling and allowing him to bluff on some boards is good as well. If there's no ace or king, I'm probably just going to go with this hand. So I call and we go heads up here to three, five, seven, two hearts. I check to him and he checks this one back. Turn card two of hearts. I've got an over pair with a jack high flush draw. Pretty good flop for me, given the fact that he did not see about this flop. I don't think he's got those bigger over pairs like aces, kings, and queens. I'm going to bet for protection now. I make it $600 to go. If he does go all in, I'm just going to have to call. If he folds, that's great. If he calls, I feel like we're in good shape. And the third option is what happens. My opponent puts in $600 for a call. And the river card is a safe one. It's the five of spades. Now we have to make a decision. Do we check or do we go all in? And I think given the pot size, my hand strength, I am all in here for around $2,000. I think we can sometimes get called by pocket nines or tens that he decided to check back on the flop maybe sometimes he'll hero call us here with ace high but i feel like that's a little bit thin i don't really like checking on this river i don't think he's going to be bluffing i think it's better to go all in and he does fold said later he had ace queen with one heart so we dodged those over cards we dodged a heart and we win another pot this next hand i play is three hours after that pocket jacks hand i was super card dead this entire session there's a raise to 100 i three bet here to 300 dollars with ace jack offsuit we go heads up in position to 994 two clubs i've got ace high ace of clubs good board to bet 
make it 250 and my opponent makes to call. Turn card seven of spades, he checks. Could go back and forth and bet again to try to get floating king high or ace high hands to fold. Don't think he's ever folding a pair if I bet again, so I decide to give up and check back. And the river card is good. It's a king. He checks to me, and I feel like I could easily be playing king jack, king queen, ace king exactly like this. If I did have those hands, I would bet relatively small according to the size of the pot. So that's what I'll do as a bluff. Make it $400, and we get called by ace king, the hand I was trying to represent. Whoops, bluff did not work. Next up, I get dealt in a beautiful hand. Queen of hearts, jack of hearts. I love playing these suited Broadway connectors. I raise under the gun to $100, small blind calls. Straddle calls are three ways to king, queen, nine. Second pair when small blind checks and under the gun checks. I decided to check this one back. Turn card doesn't help me at all. It's the four of clubs, bringing in a flush draw. Now small blind leads out for a small bet, 150. Straddle folds, and given the fact that I've got a pair, along with a straight draw as well, so I make the call and improve to trips on the river. It's a queen. Small blind now slows down and checks. I feel like he most likely has a king x hand. I feel like a $500 bet will get called by a king x hand, so that's what I do. Five black chips going in the middle. He calls. I show queen jack, and we got incredibly lucky when he shows king nine for two pair on the flop. Wow. A queen on the river to win this pot. Everything has been going my way so far this session. We've been winning some small to medium-sized pots. I have been extremely card dead, but I haven't been too coolered or bad beat so far. And I'm up about 3K before I look down at pocket jacks again. Under the gun raises to 50, folds to me in the big blind to make it 200. He four bets to 550. Oof, this is screaming some strength, but folding is no fun. So I make the call here with jacks, going heads up, out of position, four bet pot to an eight high board. All in all, I feel like this is a very safe flop. He bets $300 with less than $1,000 in his stack. If he's got me, he's got me. I announce all in. And we get snap called. Eh, doesn't look too good. Maybe sometimes he's got ace king, but not this time. We run out the board two times and we lose to pocket aces. Obviously, this is a cooler first best hand preflop versus the fourth best hand. But given the fact that there was no straddle on, we are 170 big blinds deep. I think I kind of overplay this hand. I think just calling preflop would have been fine versus an under the gun open. And once I three bet and he four bet, the alarm bells should have been ringing. Maybe could have made the hero fold, but you can't really blame me. Jacks on an eight high board with less than $1,000 to go. I think we're just always going to lose our money there. But there goes around $1,800 of our profit. It's hard to showcase the card deadness of this session, but two and a half hours later, I play this next pot. A couple players at the table were joking that I wouldn't have enough content to make a poker vlog. Well, these last two hands are definitely interesting. Ace deuce of spades I raise and get three callers going four ways to a great flop. Two, two, three with two diamonds. Flopping trips, ace kicker. When it checks to me, I bet out 150 bucks before the big blind player check raises to $400. Definitely loving this spot. I feel like he most likely has pocket pairs like pocket eights through maybe pocket jacks, maybe some bluffs as well. I think a re-raise will just look too strong and also it would fold out all of his bluffs. I feel like our only option here is to put in two more black chips and make the call. So that's what I do. Turn card, it's a good one, 10 of clubs, unless he somehow has pocket 10s. My opponent in the big blind continues to bet for a $600 sizing. And now I have to decide, should I raise now or should I just continue to call? I don't think balance really is necessary in these type of games, but it is true that I would never re-raise here after getting check raised on the flop unless I had a two or a full house with pocket threes or pocket tens. So it would be pretty unbalanced for me to re-raise here on the turn if I would really never do that with anything but a full house or trips. If I had a pair or a straight draw or flush draw, I'd always just call. So I decided to take the balance route and call, and the river card is a five. I'm wondering if my opponent's gonna go for it and continue to bet, but 
he decides now to slow down and check over to me. I think there's two things here. One, he's got a middling pocket pair, or maybe he had the five with a hand like ace five or four five, or two, he cannot call any bet because he's got a missed flush draw. I'm gonna target those middling pocket pairs and make it seem like maybe I missed my flush draw, and I bet out $2,000. It seems that he must have just been semi-bluffing or has somewhat of a weak hand because he pretty quickly folds. And just like that, we take down around $1,300 of profit flopping trips with ace deuce of spades. It's late now, 1.35 a.m. We're somewhat shorthanded, only six players left, but I get woken up pretty quickly when I raise queen jack of diamonds to 75, get one caller and flop the nuts on eight, nine, 10 rainbow. Big blind checks, I bet 75, and he makes the call. Turn card, two of clubs, now bringing in a flush draw. I decide to bet big here on this turn, thinking that he can have some two pairs, some pair plus flush draws, pair plus straight draws, make it 375. My opponent thinks for a little bit of time and calls again. Pot is quickly building here. We've got the nuts. Let's see if we can hold on the river. And we don't get the best card. Ace of clubs. Backdoor flush gets there. And ace is a scare card now to a 10. He checks. And I am just not loving this river. Obviously, we don't have the nuts anymore. We lose two backdoor flushes. And with the ace coming out, it's hard to get value from a top pair holding. Something like jack 10, queen 10 king 10 so i'm going to go with a bet fold strategy here i make it 550 dollars knowing in my mind that my opponent would not be check raising with a set or two pair if he had those hands i think he would be most likely raising on the flop or the turn i think if he check raises me here on this river he just always has a flush and we can pretty comfortably get away from our hand sounds kind of crazy holding the nuts straight but i feel pretty confident with that assessment I am hoping for a hero tank call by my opponent, but unfortunately we do not get paid off. He eventually folds. We do end up taking down one of the last pots of the night. The table ends up breaking around 2 a.m. I'm tired and exhausted. I'm booking a win. I rack up my chips, head to the cage, and cash out. guys that is it for this one i had somewhat of an interesting week wednesday i played golf i tried to play a poker session couldn't get enough content to make a poker vlog came back on sunday and played a session at harris pompano beach which you guys just watched i ended up profiting two thousand dollars in that session now this is where it gets a little bit interesting during that session on sunday night my throat started hurting and aching every single time i swallowed it just really just did not feel good I had like a minor cold and cough throughout last week, so I thought maybe that was just part of it, like a little bit of a sore throat. I woke up Monday morning, just a couple days ago, and I was in terrible, excruciating pain. Every single time I would try to swallow, it felt like someone was stabbing me with a knife in my throat. I had to wince and like, oh my God, it hurt so bad. So I went to the doctor, they tested me for strep throat, came back negative. They looked at my tonsils and they're like, yeah, you have tonsillitis, which I had never heard of before this and I've never had in my entire life, basically an infection in your tonsils and it's awful. It's like some of the worst pain I had ever had. So Monday, I felt terrible. My tonsils were swollen. Every single time I tried to swallow, it hurt like hell. Trying to eat or drink took forever. So basically, you know, I could hardly eat or drink for about a day or so. Yesterday, my tonsils were so swollen up that I could hardly talk without like feeling like I was gagging. Like it's, I know it's too much information, but it was terrible. Today, finally starting to feel better about two and a half, three days after, took some Motrin and it's like starting to finally feel like I can, you know, my throat is not on fire and I'm taking antibiotics. So luckily that's getting better. Also on Monday when I was feeling like death, River got spayed that day. So I had to bring her early in the morning to the vet. I was like, I could hardly talk to the ladies at the vet. I'm like, yeah, she's here to get spayed. So when I dropped her off, I went to the doctor. I came back and picked her up. She was all fucked up. They said that she was hurting. They got her on pain meds. 
she was all high and you know I felt so bad for her she was kind of whimpering and crying so I was here for two days just trying to live and stay alive she was on the couch just resting recovering from getting spayed but luckily she's feeling much better she's got a ton of energy back and her wounds look like they're healing up I am getting better as well I'm able to talk and I'm able to you know swallow without feeling like death and I'm hoping that the antibiotics will continue to kick in and I'll be feeling better but yeah an interesting couple of days it's pretty terrible being sick you just take your life for granted you know you're going through everyday life and you're like this is cool I'm just doing this and doing this and then you get sick and you're on the couch for two and a half three days and you're like wow this is terrible all right let's update you guys on the bankroll rebuild so we started with a sixty thousand dollar deficit and so far this month of march i am up thirty four thousand dollars so finally after november december january and february losing 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 sixty thousand dollars so far this month of, it, of march i'm up thirty four thousand so sixty minus thirty four is twenty six thousand dollars to go just to get back to even but we're trending in the right direction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. More videos just like this to come. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see ya.